Hey guys, AJ with AJEads.com here talking about cook sets. And I know that this is a very personalized thing for most people when you're going out backpacking. And I just wanted to show you the kind of setup that I have evolved to. Uh, certainly this is not where I started out. And frankly, uh, big credit to Suge Mary. Uh, anybody that doesn't know about Sean Emery's channel, Suge Mary, that's into backpacking or hammock camping, definitely go check that out. Link in the description below. Uh, this is almost a virtually exact copy of what he has all the way down to the fact that on complete accident I actually got a green bag uh, just like he keeps his in but I use the same pot the same coffee cup uh, a very similar stove and a very similar setup all together that he does so thought I would walk you through the steps why I've chosen this system how I use it and why I think it's the best for me but I just want to give you guys all some perspective and see what you think so let's jump right in uh, first and foremost, everybody's got to think about, more importantly than anything else, what it is that you use your cook set for. How do you cook? Are you going to use a lot of meals that require pan frying? Are you going to do things that are um, you know, beyond the typical boiling water, putting them in the bag, uh, and doing the dehydrated meals thing? So always think about your personal use. Get out there. Try some things. I started out with, I want to say, an MSR or a GSI. I think it was a GSI Trail Light Duo. Uh, I don't have it anymore, but um, it was, you know, a big pot, two bowls, two coffee mugs, heavy plastic, cool to start with, good for car site camping uh, for two people, but for an individual that's backpacking and really kind of trying to be weight conscious, um, definitely wasn't really, you know, the long-term solution. And then after that, I went over to a Snow Peak. I want to say it was a 750, might have been a 600. Um, problem with that pot was it was that it was too small to bring an accompanying coffee pot then I went with a suggestion from Syntax 77 big fan of his channel as well um, and Syntax basically made his own system out of a you know some sort of a cheap coffee cup or a, a coffee can and I tried that for a while the coffee can started rusting uh, so I've kind of gone to this system here so let's go ahead and jump in and see what it is all that I've got in my little sack here so um, pulling this open, uh, I don't have an exact weight on this system. I'll have to get that for you. I'll put it in the description below. Uh, this sack is a um, Sea to Summit Cordura uh, dry sack, or not a dry sack, just one of their little bivy sacks. Um, you're probably going to notice that this is smaller than the ones that you've seen. And I actually took this to uh, my local seamstress that does, you know, my jeans and my pants and stuff like that, uh, and just had her made it make it smaller uh cost me about 15 bucks to have that done seems kind of ridiculous seeing as though these bags cost ten dollars themselves but uh or fifteen dollars themselves but i really wanted something that was kind of exactly what i wanted and i was willing to spend that money so uh in this bag coming down and the two things that this bag does not hold it does not hold uh, my spoon and it does not hold fuel technically i could probably get some of my fuel bags in and around because as you can see I've got you know some pretty significant space, um, but I carry most of my fuel in other parts of my bag away from this, so um, you know I'm not really concerned with trying to do that. So inside of here, I have got so here's my bag. Uh, in here, I have got an Imusa pot. Uh, Imusa pots are anywhere between like twelve and eighteen dollars online. I bought mine on Amazon, and all it is is a uh, cast aluminum pot this big right here uh, this handle here and I did this because uh, Suge suggested this and I thought it was great for carrying it this handle actually comes bent further out sorry uh, like this and this is how it comes uh, and then I just pushed this in like that to get that smaller, less exposed handle like that. And that's all I need with a bandana to grab that off of my, my uh, stove. So this is a really nice little pot. Um, I really like it in the fact that it's really simple. It's got some flex to it, so you can't just really beat it. But um, you know, for my purposes, this does exactly what I want it to do. I actually like eating out of a pot more than I do out of a bag. So this is great because it's easy to clean. It's really simple. It's really light for what it is. You can boil a ton of water. I don't know if you can see this, but on the inside, you'll see kind of a 
discoloration there, that is about two cups of boiling water in there. So as you can see, I could boil a lot more than two cups. So if I had a friend with me that didn't have their own cook set, we could certainly both utilize this for meals, which would be nice. Uh, I made this pot cozy, which I'll make another video on how I did this. Um, Shug's got a great one out there, but I'll go ahead and kind of walk you through the steps of how I did it. Uh, pretty similar fashion. Uh, this is using Reflectix. One thing that I found here in St. Louis is that Home Depot does not sell this stuff. Lowe's does. So if you go to Home Depot, you may have a hard time finding this. Uh, it comes in big giant rolls. I've got a ton more stuff in the basement that I could be using. Um, for other stuff and so I'm kind of coming up with ways to use Reflectix. I think the roll was like 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, certainly more than I needed. I wish you could buy just like little sheets of it online but you know I haven't been able to find that. Um, and then I just basically cut a little notch here and that holds my pot once I've taken it off the stove. So speaking of stoves, we'll come back to this little guy here. Um, in here, I use a Fancy Feast stove. It is a alcohol stove. I made this myself. Um, I've had a lot of fun kind of working on this stuff and building it myself. So uh, this is a Fancy Feast stove. A lot of you have seen this. This is just simply a 50 cent uh, Fancy Feast cat food can. This is also a small uh, can of Hunt's tomato paste or any brand of tomato paste. Um, and then I cut it off with a Dremel tool and used a hole punch to cut this little hole right here in the top. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then around that, between the two, is a piece of carbon felt. Uh, this is stuff that welders use, putting behind, uh, or plumbers use, they put this behind whatever they're applying heat to to protect what's behind it. Um, this came in sheets. I can't remember if it was 10 to $15 for the whole package. I made like 10 or 15 of these things using that package of carbon felt and I've given them out to a bunch of my different friends um, you know that, that backpack because they don't have these and so I thought it'd be just nice what am I going to do with the carbon felt uh, so basically what I've got in my package here is I used um, a piece of tin foil um, that was kind of a real heavy grade tin foil and I, actually this may have been like one of those cooking sheets that you can buy at the grocery store that are really cheap. I put some of the aluminum tape that I used for my pot uh, on there just to kind of finish off the edges and keep things from being sharp. So that is my vapor barrier. You put this down to keep uh, the cold ground from kind of pushing uh, up through the, uh, the, the, the pot itself or the, uh, the stove itself. So uh, the vapor barrier is essentially just used to do exactly what you 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 know just thought about is is really create a barrier between your pot and the ground or your stove in the ground, uh, and then I go with my pot right on top of that. So I will use about an ounce ounce 1.1 ounces uh, to boil two cups of water, depending on how cold it is. I will take the pot and just put it right on there. It uh, takes a little bit of balancing, so that's something that if you're used to like an MSR Whisper Light or something that's got a bigger base to it. Uh, this may take a little getting used to. It takes a little bit more balancing uh, to get it right. I did the same thing, same material. And in fact, yeah, this is one of those, um, those store-bought uh, cookie kind of sheet type things. Um, and then basically, I just fold this over. This is my windscreen. And so this can be folded in half just like that to fit in down inside. And essentially, it's just kind of tall enough to create that wind and then you got to make sure that you have some holes across the punch the bottom that you can do with a hole punch and then basically you just do your windscreen kind of custom fit it to what it needs to be you know your winds normally coming from one direction so I'm not obsessed with having it go all the way around I need just to block where the wind is coming from I bought um, this lid one thing that you're gonna find is that uh, I moose pots oddly don't come with lids. There's no way that I'm aware of to buy them online with lids other than from the retailers that sell the lids themselves. Um, so I went to Mini Bowl Designs. I will have a link to them in the description as well uh, to buy this lid. It's funny is that the lid itself was almost as expensive as the pot. Not a crack on Mini Bowl Designs. I think they do an awesome job. I love their stuff, um, you know, but it, there's a cost of production. So, you know, this, uh, this pot itself all in is going to cost you 25 bucks, but it's going to give you more space and it's going to give you very comparable weight to a titanium like a snow peak or a tokes 
and it's probably going to cost you about half or even less than that of what one of those titanium pots are going to cost. And frankly, I think this would last absolutely just as long as long as you kind of, you know, don't uh, don't abuse it or anything. So uh, having a lid is nice, and basically that's how you would boil water. So this is my basic stove setup. The one other thing that I kind of add to that, I carry uh, a little microfiber towel. I got this at REI. Um, this is basically uh, just in case I need something for cleanup. It can also serve the function of kind of a, uh, a pot grabber if I need it to. So essentially this thing folds over and I could take this very easily and just grab and use that to move my pot to my cozy. Uh, the one other thing that I'm kind of big on, I love having hot drinks. I mainly do my camping in the cold. Uh, you know, I don't really like being out when it's hot and sweaty and muggy, so I do the majority of my camping here in the Midwest uh, in the fall, winter, and early spring, and then I kind of take the majority of the summer for float trips and just uh, other stuff here ar around town. I kind of do a lot of my rock climbing in the gyms and things like that at that time. Um, but I love having coffee or hot chocolate or something around, you know, the fire or in the morning, and I don't like having to use the same pot for both. Like I said, I like to cook and eat in my pot rather than just boil the water and put it in the bags. This is a better experience for me to hold this in my cozy with my spoon while I'm laying in my hammock and eating than it is to have some kind of weird flexible bag. Um, you know, and this, the, the extra cleanup is worth it to me. I just carry a couple of extra paper towels uh, that I can wipe this out with after I kind of rinse it out with just a little bit of water. Um, so that is kind of the pot system. What I've also done to alleviate the coffee system, being able to bring my own coffee cup, but have it fit in here, have it be super lightweight, have it work just really, really well. Um, again, this is what uh, a very similar design to Shug's Foster Pot. Um, I don't think that this is, uh, well, this is actually a, a Foster's beer can. Uh, I can't remember what this thing is called on Mini Bull Designs, but I'll link it in the description. Uh, so that you can go out and get this. Essentially, it is a Foster's beer can that's rolled over, um, and uh, then they put a rubber lip around the outside so you don't uh, burn your lips when you're drinking, and then they put a fiberglass wicking around the outside so you can grab it. I don't personally suggest holding it like this. The can itself, it just doesn't give you as big of a grip as I personally like, so I went ahead and made my own reversible cozy. Uh, this actual little pot itself does come with its own lid, um, and it's kind of wedged down in there. <laughs> um, but this has its own lid, so technically, if I get up in the morning and I don't feel like having a hot breakfast, I just want to eat a Pop-Tart or eat a granola bar or eat something and, and get out, but I do want to have some coffee, this is a great little guy because I can actually use this the circumference of the bottom of that can fits really nicely on top of a fancy feast stove and it actually kind of keeps it in place which is really nice this is a, a really nice little setup right here if all you want to do is have a hot drink uh, this is great to throw in a backpack if you just go for like a day hike in the winter and you want to stop and, and make a cup of coffee uh, this is a great little solution i've even actually brought this uh, and this when i've traveled uh, just so I know I can make coffee, I'll bring a couple Starbucks via, and uh, that will give me the option to you know, make coffee whenever I want, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then this has its own cozy, which kind of keeps things contained. That way I can hold the whole cup. Don't have to worry about just holding on to that tiny little bit of fiberglass wicking. And then I can, uh, oh, lawnmower in the background, sorry guys. Um, then I can drink it at my disposal, and then when I'm done, once I've got it all cleaned out, this actually inverts and then holds everything in place really nicely so that nothing's rattling around and jumbling around. So putting this all kind of back together is really simple. I just take my pot and or pot lid and invert it in my little cozy, kind of stick it up in there. Uh, I always keep a little bit of a cheap plastic bag barrier uh, between the stove. Not that I think I'm you know, really worried about you know, excess fuel or anything. I let this thing burn off before it's done. Uh, and the other thing that's really nice about these is they cool down really fast. So if you're in kind of a hurry to get out of here uh, after you make your coffee, if the wind kicks up or if the rain kicks up, these things cool down really quick. So do these. So it's really nice to be able to just move quickly. Uh, take that microfiber towel. I wrap it around the actual stove itself and then just pop that down in there. 
that lid goes right on top. And then I can take this, and this is just the lid for that cozy. I put that on top, sorry, move that. I put that on top when I'm cooking, and that way it, uh, you know, if I'm rehydrating a meal, that, including the lid, will really keep a nice, you know, kind of tight, uh, you know, environment where that meal will cook and rehydrate really, really well, especially if you're doing like beans or pasta or something, you know, the ones that are notorious for uh, not cooking all the way through. Um, and then that just fits up in the lid just like the foster pot one does. So essentially, I just take my vapor barrier, fold it over in half, take my windscreen, do the same, fold it over in half. I take the windscreen, roll it up in here, and then I take that vapor barrier and just put it in between the windscreen and the pot itself. Kind of takes a little bit of a curve to do it, but it's really, you know, simple and easy. And then once I've got that done, then this little guy just drops right in there. And, you know, I've kind of had to kind of finagle the cozy top a little bit, but that really fits in there nice and doesn't move around a lot, which is nice because when you're backpacking, you really don't want stuff clanging or moving too much. And then all you got to do is put that lid right on there, put it back in the bag, cinch it up, and then just to get rid of this, I just run it through there and, you know, a little grandma knot on top, real loose, uh, just to kind of tie up some of that excess. And then I don't have to worry about it. That is my cook set. Uh, if you've got questions or if you think that you've got ideas on how to make this better or how to improve it or if you've got uh, ideas on what would make a really awesome cook set, let me know. Make a comment uh, below in the video. I would love to hear from all of you guys. Let's make a great community around this. Um, the reason I'm doing these videos is that I learned a ton by watching other people and uh, avoided a lot of mistakes in gear that I bought and in trips that I've taken uh, just based on you know what I've learned from others. So I'm hoping I can kind of pay it forward and do the same for other people. So uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and thanks so much for visiting. Again, I'm AJ with AJEads.com. Get out there and have some fun, guys.